Happy Tuesday! Carolyn Peeler with you today in Ellen Hudson's classroom and I have a fun project for you today. This one is perfect for all those times when you have a project in mind but you don't have the right pattern paper in your stash. Today I'm going to walk you through a solution for that problem. So I'm going to start with using some watercolor paper here. This is cut 9 inches by 11 inches and I've used the Ranger Craft Mat as my palette and the Barn Door Distress Ink with some water, a three-quarter inch paintbrush, and we are in business. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint some stripes going down this pattern paper, sorry, this watercolor paper. Stripes is a great pattern to use simply because they're very basic, they don't compete with your photo, they're sort of classic, not really trendy, they work for so many different looks, whether it's a masculine, feminine layout, doesn't matter, that it'll work. As you can see, I'm going over each stripe about two or three times so that I get a nice buildup of color. Now this is the second pattern paper that we're going to work on. This one is a 3 by 11 inch strip of watercolor paper. And for this one, I'm doing little V's all over the paper. This is a little bit more of a modern design, but it's not symmetrical. It's not perfect in any stretch of the imagination whatsoever, which is really great for someone like me who has problems sometimes when I'm drawing to get things perfectly symmetrical. So I've just simply done this V pattern all the way down this watercolor paper, and now I'm going back and I'm hitting some of those Vs again with the ink so that I get a nice buildup of color. Now this is the Hickory Smoke Distress Ink, one of the new colors, which is beautiful. It's kind of a cross between black and gray. I absolutely love it, and it worked really great for this particular project. Now I'm going to be stamping the journaling card that's going to go on the top left of the layout. For this one, I'm using a 3 by 4 inch piece of smooth white cardstock, and then the stamp is from the Santa's Flight Essentials by Ellen stamp set, which is a beautiful stamp set. Works great for cards or in this application for layouts or pocket scrapbooking. And I'm going to use the Distress Ink markers and take the ink directly onto the stamp. This is the Hickory Smoke color, so the same color that we used for those Vs. And then I'm going to use also the Festive Berries marker. And this one is for that shot of red, which is really going to stand out. After I've colored, I'm going to take the ink, the spray bottle, Holding the stamp about 10 inches away, I'm going to hit it three times with some water, and that's simply to sort of reactivate all the ink and get everything ready to go for a smooth impression. Once everything is dry, I'm going to go ahead and glue this journaling card to the top of that V pattern paper, and now this part is ready for the assembly. Now this little piece of paper, I am so sorry. I was going to video it for you, and I thought my videotape was going, and afterwards I discovered it wasn't. Really simple process. This is the Christmas Scribbles stamp set. I stamp the stamp onto bundled sage ink, then using the Mode Lawn Distress Ink marker, I hit just a couple parts of the image with the marker, I sprayed it with water, and then stamped. Okay, so now we're going back to the Santa Slay stamp set. This time we're using the Ho with the three behind it. So we've got our Ho cubed, I guess. Ho, ho, ho and we're stamping it with the Distress ink. And as you can see, every other time I stamp, I'm gonna spray with the water bottle. So here, I spray with the water bottle, I stamp. The next time, I'm gonna just hit it with the ink pad and then stamp directly to the paper without spraying. That's because there is enough residual water that I only need to stamp every spray every second time. So this time again, spray it again before I stamped it. Okay, now we're on to the assembly process. So using that big 9 by 11 piece of watercolor, we're using that as our base and we're gluing everything to that. This beautiful photo is by my friend Rachel and it's her little girl Avery. And it was perfect for this project. Then we're going to go ahead and glue also the green pattern paper with our beautiful evergreen boughs down the right side. Now for the background of this, this is simply a card, uh, a card stock, a craft card stock. That we're using as the base for our layout. All right, so for this ho ho ho, it's a little bit long because we we stamped it on a one inch by eleven inch piece of pattern paper. So we're going to go ahead and put our pop dots in place. Then we're simply going to hold everything while we snip off the excess, and then we can go ahead and stick it down, and everything's cut perfectly to size. 
Now we have this on pop dots so that we have a little bit of visual interest on our layout. It creates nice shadows. One of the things I love doing on both my card and scrapbooking projects is I love having pops of color that sort of are a little bit unexpected. That's what this gold strip is here. It coordinates beautifully color-wise, but it just adds a little bit of brightness to the layout. Finally, we have three different pattern paper strips here. We punch those with a one and a half inch punch, and those are simply going down onto our V pattern paper. Now, one thing I noticed after I got to this step, which was all I was planning to do, which was that I felt like I needed some more pops of color. So I also cut a little strip of green cardstock and a little strip of red cardstock, and I'm adding those to where my pattern papers meet. Once again, first just some pops of color to help the layout really stand out. Okay, so now we're going back to that Christmas Scribbles stamp set. That's the one that had that evergreen bow on it. And for this one, we're gonna use the ornament. Now we stamped it onto watercolor paper, and then we use the coordinating die to cut the ornament out. I've got to say, I am so in love with stamp companies that make coordinating dies to go with their stamp sets. I don't know about you, but I can remember when I used to stamp stuff and have to fussy cut it. And oh my goodness, I love this so much that so many companies now come out with coordinating dies. It's awesome. So back to what we're doing here. Um, I've gone ahead and everything's been cut out with the dies. And now we're using going to use three different colors of ink. The one I was using there was the fossilized amber. This one is barn door and the final one we're going to use is the mowed lawn. And for these we're simply laying the colors down onto this craft sheet, mixing it with a little bit of water to create the watercolor, and going ahead and coloring in the images. As you can see I'm going over each one a couple times to build up that color to get the intensity I'm after. It's up to you. Um, obviously if you don't go ahead and go over it as many times, you're going to get a much more subtle lay down of color. So it's really a personal preference as to what you like and the project that you're working on, uh, what you're going after, whether you want soft and subtle or whether you want bold and bright. So here, this is the mode lawn. Unfortunately, that one's just a little bit off camera, but I simply took the marker, colored it onto the craft sheet, and then same process, mixed it with a little bit of water to create the watercolor, and now I'm coloring the image. If you wanted, you could also put glossy accents after, on these after they dry um, so you have a glossy ornament. It's up to you. Final step is to add the journaling onto the project, which here I did in vellum and then sewed the vellum in place. And with the marker, you can go ahead and add the name to the stamped, the little blank in the stamped image. So that's today's project. Thank you so much for staying with me and watching it with me. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments area, and I will be sure to try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks so much, and have a great week.